you've been tirelessly working on your game for weeks and you encounter this problem. How can I access an information that is needed by more than one scene in your game? You can do this with singletons, also called autoloads. Think of autoloads as a giant folder where you can store persistent information between scenes. They are always loaded after the root node no matter what scene are running. In the editor, I've created two scripts, the switcher, which will be using to switch scenes later on, and this extends from a node object, and lastly, a music script, which extends from the audio stream player. Now I'm going to add these two scripts as an autoload, click project settings, and we'll go to the autoload tab. I'm going to click this folder icon right here. And as we can see from the bottom right corner, you can autoload scenes, scripts, resource, and a lot more. I'll click the music script, leave its node name as music, and click add. And now the script can be accessed from anywhere in the scene. Let's do the same for our switcher. And click add to. Let's test it out. And we'll see a Waymo panel which shows the changes to the nodes at runtime. Whenever you auto load the script, a node will be created and the script will be attached to it. And it is added to the viewport before any other scene. Now this scene or script has to inherit from the node else you get an error. Like any regular scene, the engine reads the node from top to bottom and you can change its ordering using the arrow keys. If we run this, we see the switcher is loaded before the music node. In our switcher script, I'll declare a variable health and assign zero as a value. And in the autoload of the project setting, I'm going to toggle off music enabled. And there are two ways we can access an autoload. But first, let me copy the health variable and paste it in the music script. I'll head to main and declare a ready function. And let's try to access the music health variable. We're going to say get node. And the IntelliSense is smart enough and displays us a path to the autoloads and the root node. I'm going to pick music, then dot type in health. Cool. So now that's one way of accessing an autoload. Let's try a different approach for the switcher. Let me just type this right here, switcher. And I'm going to get rid of this one. And as you can see, the engine immediately recommends the switcher. And that's because the switcher is enabled. We can access it directly without requiring get node. Then dot again recommends the health variable. Now, let me just click on that. Okay, and let's go to run our scene. And just click that. And pretty cool. So, it works. Warning. Warning. Autoloads must not be removed using free or queue free at runtime, or the engine will crash. Now let's build a scene switcher using autoload. Now I'll open scene one scene and subscribe. But that wasn't there. But it should do. Um, let me just rename that. There. Okay, let's check out scene two. Smash the like button. I did not see that coming. Also, like if you enjoyed this video. Now both scenes inherit from the same script and if you want to learn more on inheritance, you can find out more from the video card being displayed at the end of this video.
now we'll connect the button press signal to the unbutton press function which we use to change the scene using a file path which is one way but we're going to be using auto load i'll head to my switcher declare a variable current scene and set that to null we'll declare a ready function and we want to fetch the current scene and your auto load nodes are always the first child of the root that means that the last child is the loaded scene the one we will need so we declare a variable root and get the root node and assign to the current scene the last child of the root now we we'll declare a go to scene function which would be called by other function in the current scene and you don't want to delete the current scene cause it might still be running both so i'll call the call the third function which will call a deferred go to scene function and pass the new scene as an argument in our deferred go to scene function I'll free the current scene and use a resource loader to load the new scene. We'll instantiate it and add it as a child of the root. Optionally, you can make it compatible with the change scene to file which I showed earlier. In our scene script, we'll call the switcher go to scene and pass the new scene, which is a part to in scene one case that is scene two let's run this now okay now let's check out our remote panel so we can see all the changes that are happening on the scene as the game is running i'm just going to position this and let's click the button go to scene two and perfect is working so we change to scene two let's do this again and great now let's try playing some background music and i'll be using the house in a forest from the official your face 2d game in the godot documentation which you should check out and this are really simple we'll declare a ready function we load the music and assign that to stream set auto play to true so the music plays at the start of the game and finally play let's run this this is absolutely beautiful hopefully you understand what auto loads can do now i will recommend checking out the official documentation and i'll also recommend checking out the auto loads versus regular nodes their links are in the description below i had a lot of fun hopefully you did too thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video